Hello again and welcome to the channel and today we'll be talking about what's the difference by Dr. Dre featuring Eminem and how this is linked to the dancehall king Sean Paul. What's the difference is one of my favorite tracks on Dr. Dre's 1999 album 2001 and the song features Eminem and Exhibit. Obviously Eminem is my favorite rapper and Sean Paul is my favorite dancehall artist and they both had features on this same beat. Brief by Blue Cantrell also uses this beat and Sean Paul is featured on that song and I'll leave a link to Blue Cantrell's version at the description of this video and if you know a DJ out there I'd appreciate a mix of both songs. As we dive into what's the difference, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications and if you're a huge Eminem fan, this is the perfect channel for you. Dr. Dre starts the first verse of the song and talks about how he's had his head straight in the game since the beginning. I was banging with a gang of instrumentals, got the pins and pencils, got down to business. Rather than gang banging, he was busy perfecting his art and pumping out hot beats with his crew NWA. So beat banger is a more accurate description of how he's been since the beginning. But not too long after the group began to gain fame and the cash came flowing in, other problems started popping up. Sometimes the business end of this shit can turn your friends against you. The bar was referring to how things changed as soon as Jerry Heller got involved and divided the group because of money. Jerry focused on Easy and the rest of the members were getting the short end of the stick but since Easy was alright he didn't see the problem and this is common when friends get mixed up with business. In addition, this bar was also directed at DOC that also felt he wasn't getting what he deserved for writing for Dre. And at this point Dre and DOC had reconciled and this becomes clearer in the next bars where Dre refers to the incident that wrecked DOC's career. I still remember the window of the car that you went through That's fucked up, but I'll never forget the shit we've been through DOC was driving drunk and had an accident that damaged his voice and because of this his career as a rapper was pretty much over. This was a guy that had so much potential and was responsible for writing many of Dre's lyrics but his career was over after the incident. Dre suggests that he'll do what he can to make sure his relationship with DOC gets better and also talks about his fallout with Easy e Fuck the beef, nigga, I miss you and that's just being real with you. From being a group together and popularizing gangster rap, Easy and Dre had a beef that will last until shortly before Easy's death in 1995 and here Dre states that he puts all that behind him and remembers his deceased friend in a positive light. Although the beef was over between Dre, Easy and Cube, there were still speculations regarding the state of the relationship between Dre and his former associates and Dre also speaks about this. Everybody wanna know how close me and Snoop is and who I'm still cool with. Snoop was mentioned here because after the classic doggy style album that Dre and Snoop released, they stopped working together which fueled the speculation that they had ill feelings towards each other. Dre probably directs the next bars at NWA member MC Ren that did an interview and spoke negatively about Dre not wanting to work with his former colleagues. Then I got these fake ass niggas I first flew with, claiming they non-violent, spit venom in interviews, speaking on reunions. As you can see, Dre talks about interviews in that bar, which suggests that Dre is talking about the particular interview that MC Ren did in 1998, talking about how Dre didn't want to work with them. However, the beef between Ren and Dre didn't last long as they reconciled shortly after. And in the next bar, Dre seemed to talk about the state of affairs at that time between him and Shug Knight. Just keep my name out of your mouth and we can keep it the same, nigga. Of course, Dre had a beef with Suge and even after he departed from Death Row Records, Suge released a Chronic 2000 album, which is why Dre went with 2001 for this album. And this bar is pretty much how Dre wanted things to remain between him and Suge. For those that missed the news, Suge is now serving 28 years in prison for a hit and run death that was caught on tape. Remember that the name of the song is What's the Difference and Dre ends his verse by stating the difference between him and other rappers. It ain't that I'm too big to listen to the rumors, it's just that I'm too damn big to pay attention to them. Dre is implying that he's at a point where it doesn't matter what small fry say about him since they are insignificant for him to give them any attention. Exhibit starts the next verse and gives props to Dre in the first bars. Never knew about the next level until Dre did it. 
Dre with the group NWA were part of the pioneers of gangster rap, and at the point this song was made, Dre was already established as a legend of the game, and the fact that Eminem's album dropped before 2001 and was doing numbers, Dre's legendary status got a significant boost. In the next bars, Exhibit most likely took shots at Jermaine Dupri. While he remained unchanged and stayed true to his roots, Jermaine Dupri was claiming to be the best producer in hip-hop when his biggest money makers were kids, Lil Bow Wow and Criss Cross, so Exhibit is pretty much stating that Dupri is playing around with kids while him and Dre are moving the genre forward. As the saying goes, the best revenge is success, and Exhibit takes some time to stunt on his haters. Come and get it shitted on villains by the millions. Here he's stating that by making millions, he rained on the parade of his haters from back in the day. In addition, this bar is also him stating that he's taking a dump on millions of rappers, since villain in hip hop is also used to refer to an MC. Exhibit continues and towards the end of his verse talks about the difference between him and his competition slash critics, which is often the case when you compare haters and the people they hate. About five bank accounts, three ounces and two vehicles. So five bank accounts, enough weed that could land you in jail, and multiple vehicles. And for some reason, this reminds me of Eminem versus Eminem haters like Baldin and Bondman. The difference is night and day. Exhibit ends it with this. Until my death, I'm Bangladesh. I suggest you hold your breath till ain't no left. And Bangladesh in that bar is a slang for I'm cool, and hold your breath in that bar implies that his critics stay silent since their opinions are insignificant. It also implies that they are worthless and the planet would be better off if they suffocated themselves. Eminem starts his verse by describing how he's down for Dr. Dre. I don't know if I ever told you this, but I love you dog. I got your motherfucking back. This song was on Dre's 1999 album, and ever since we've never heard of any beef between Eminem and Dre, and this relationship has proved to be one of the best bonds ever in hip hop, and is certainly Dre's best compared to his former associates. Dre responds to Eminem with this. I don't know if you noticed it, but I've had your back from day one. Signing Eminem was certainly risky for Dr. Dre, and he was even advised to not take the risk, as if Eminem failed, Dre's relationship with Indoscope would have been over since Dre was on thin ice before signing Eminem. So of course, Dre had M's back from the very beginning. In the next bars, Eminem expands on what he'll do for Dre if it comes to it, to show how down he is, and states that he'll even mother someone for Dre if Dre ever needed the services of Slim Shady. And Dre responds with this. Well, if you ever kill that Kim, bitch, I'll show you where the ocean is. Here, Dre is stating that he's fine with being an accomplice to murder if Eminem ever decides to end his baby mama and even give him directions on where to dump the body. This shouldn't come as a surprise since Slim Shady murders his baby mama in a previous song that released earlier that year and dumped the body in a lake, but Eminem responds to Dre's offer by referring to a movie and states how he'll carry out the murder if it ever gets to that. The movie referred to here is Weekend at Bernie's that released in 1989 that involved two losers trying to pretend that their murdered employer was alive by driving around with the corpse. Slim Shady has always found guns to be no fun, which was apparent in Relapse that released in 2009, but Shady has been the same right from the beginning. Drop the sword off and beat you with the piece of a sword off. Eminem here is referring to a sort of shotgun that is a short barrel shotgun that makes the gun smaller and lighter weight, hence easier to transport and conceal. But here Eminem would rather use the piece that's been sort of the gun to make the attack more personal and gruesome. Eminem is giving out this gruesome attack to critics who think Dre fell off because of how long it took between The Chronic and 2001. That's for trying to talk like The Chronic was lost product. That's for even thinking of having him thought as you can see, you don't even have to say shit about the Chronic for Eminem to attack. The mere thought of the Chronic in a negative manner is enough to suffer the fate Eminem described earlier, and Eminem expands on this by stating that anytime you hear the name Dre, you better show some respect. And this is what Eminem has to say about the difference between them and other rappers. What's the difference between us? We can start at the penis, or we can scream, I just don't give a fuck and see who means it. 
Eminem has used this as a reference to the level of confidence he has in his ability compared to others, and you can start with that when talking about the difference between them and other rappers. In addition, this is Eminem also implying that other rappers are pussies. He's ready to back up his words with action, and dares anyone to step up to them and see what happens. In addition, many say that they don't give a fuck, but when he says it, it's not empty. Like I said before, you can check out Sean Paul and Blue Cantrell's version if you're a fan of the dancehall king, and those with mixing skills can do a mashup and send to my Facebook. If you'd like to support the channel, consider donating to our PayPal at the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe if you enjoyed this.